Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another special edition of Wowza Live with a guest that has been described as the most interesting man in the world, Dr. David Smith. Uh, Dr. Smith, how are you to this morning? Yeah, I'm good. I, uh, I love to listen to you guys. <laughs> yes. Well, you've been described you know, on the Johnny Carson show, on um, uh, the Today Show, uh, very popular um, television programs here in the United States as everything from the real life Indiana Jones to the, the guru of the athletic high, high the pioneer of adventure uh, sports, the mystic Tarzan. I mean, and when I first read these, I go, oh, you know, that's a lot of hype, to be honest. Then when I got to know what you actually did, I think they're actually understating <laughs> what you did. Can you just give us a brief little overview of the various things you've done from, you know, obviously swimming, but running and all kinds of stuff? Well, it, it started out with swimming internationally. Uh -huh. um, and w when I listened to swimmers and, and how they feel and what they did, and um, it, it was all about swimming. Mine was all about getting to the places in the world. So it, that was my perspective. Now, whenever I was there and I did something that was spectacular, extreme, uh, I, I was certainly in it. That's what got me to the place. Uh, so starting out swimming, um, long distance marathon swims, um, it, it changed to what else can I do? Because now that I'm in kind of an international place, particularly uh, around the Mediterranean, uh, I saw that there was other things to do. So I would, I, I would say I'm more of a creative athlete than a stud. Um, so I would create adventures to do. Um, one was to trek the High Atlas Mountains and Sahara in Morocco. Um, and then whenever I came up with the answer to what are you going to do next, they would say either, uh, are you like Evil Knievel or do you have a death <laughs> wish? Or why would anybody want to do that? Or that's just impossible. Um, I, I would consider whatever that was and certainly fear was something that would come up and then I would have to train for whatever it was okay. um, physically okay. and mentally so um, to, to answer the question of what were some of the things I, I kayaked the Nile from Ethi near Ethiopia the Blue Nile uh, it meets the White Nile in Khartoum and continues on to Cairo um, and the Mediterranean. Um, I created multi-sports where um, my cover of Sports Illustrated was I jumped out of a plane for my first time. Uh, I landed in Raccoon Straits and we were just talking about swimming from land to land. Uh, I landed in the water, I could have just taken the parachute off and swam to the other side. No, I had to do it by the English Channel Association rules. I had to swim to the shore, walk out three steps, walk back in and swim across. Um, and then I went underwater with a lung and I ran and uh, trail bike to the top of the mountain. Um, but I was just writing about something where I did 10 events. And I did this during the Olympics, or right after the Olympics. Uh, what year was this? To this was 1972. Okay. And I was really kind of taking on the, um, the quality of the Olympics. Now, 1972 was not a good Olympic yes. year. Yeah, Munich. Um, there were nine murders. Yes. Um, there was a lot of cheating. There was a lot of judges that were cheating. Uh, internationally. Yes. Uh, it, it just was not the, the U.S. basketball team won, but yes. then they lost. I mean, it was, it yes. was a mess. So my events were, and, and part of the reason was that I took 
the original Olympics and uh, the competitors and winners, when they went back to their village, they would knock down part of their walls showing they had an inner strength. So I was kind of going for that inner strength. What can I do to blow away some of my uh, anxieties? And so the first event, I, by the way, I ran a torch through Gibraltar from the lock gates in Spain to the end of Europa Point. And then I spent the night locked in a cavern. Uh, and th there's a whole thing about that. I mean, I just, I really scared the shit out of myself. Um, but the next event was walking blindfolded through the labyrinth streets of Tangier. I walked on water down the Bora Greg River at Rabat. Um, I climbed to the top of North Africa. So these are different kinds of fears that come up. Uh, I, I became a storyteller in the square in Marrakesh as a fool. Now, I, I don't know, any of your swimmers uh, think they can do something like that? Do you, do you understand? Yes, I yes. mean, there is the fear of humiliation. Yeah. Um, could, could anyone stand there and start talking? Yeah. Could you draw a crowd? Mm, probably not. You better do something. So. Yeah. Uh, being judged is a fear and something to get over. So these were things that I was kind of working on at the same time, uh, it, whatever the event was, got me to that place in the world. Got it. Um, so this creative genius to, to create these events, did it come originally from just wanting to travel or was it yeah. a, Okay, yeah. so, so you, you wanted to travel, but you also wanted to push yourself. You wanted to extend your limits in some way, is that? Absolutely. Got it. Um, because I came from owning a bar in San Francisco at age 22, Got and uh, I was really at the top of, um, the, the expression was, this guy's got it made. Got it. You know, it was my own party every night, <laughs> and I was making a living off it. So, you know, I had new fast cars and uh, Miss America girlfriends and like that. And then at one point I thought I, I needed to make a change. So I started reading Aldous Huxley um, and uh, Eastern philosophies. I mean, I didn't know yeah. anything about Eastern philosophies. You know, yeah. now it's a little different. Yeah. Uh, but back then, we're talking about 1964. Uh -huh. uh, and even though I was in San Francisco, which is a pretty cosmopolitan hip place, uh, it just the the um, the ability to make changes was not dripping off the wall. Yeah. And particularly if you, you owned a bar, why would you want to do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there was that going on that I really wanted. It was an introspection. I was a totally gregarious person. If I wasn't talking to you one-on-one um, -on -one or one-on-ten, I'd be on the telephone. And then I got into swimming and what a difference that is. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I didn't know I had that introvert in me. Yeah. As we all know, there's no one to talk to unless you stop and tread. Yeah. So um, when you're when you're swimming, you know, the Strait of Gibraltar, when you're you're hiking up mountains, when you're you're walking bare th barefoot through this labyrinth, um, how do you how do you judge what is safe and what is unsafe? What how, where does that risk management come into place? I mean, yeah, you want to extend yourself, but you don't want to get injured or killed. I would say, uh, in terms of stepping stones and confidence. I mean, when I owned the bar, I was a confident, cocky, conceited asshole. <laughs> you know, I, I had it made. <clears throat> so then I would find out that was not so much. Um, and each experience, I got more confident in doing okay. whatever the next thing was. Now, that said, that doesn't mean that you can stay alive because uh, I have a series of um, experiences where the confidence really went against me. Um, 
the expression in over your head. Yeah. Ooh, I got that one. Okay. Like, so, give, give us some examples of that. <clears throat> um, although I kayaked the Nile, my boat was uh, 17 feet long and very wide. So the first time I was ever in a kayak was in the Nile. It wasn't like I was a stud kayaker and look for some place to show what I could do right. in a kayak. I'm very secure in the water, obviously. But um, the, the boat that I was in was a long distance boat. Got it. Uh, you couldn't do a Eskimo roll. <laughs> uh, or you, you wouldn't roll back up. You could roll right. under. So I was up in the, um, the western arm of the Himalayas, the Karakoram. And um, I actually was in a swim there. I raced a guy across this river. This was a raging river. And, and what altitude place, is this? The, the place is called Hunza. It's the okay. real life Shangri-La. It's a principality above Pakistan okay. and below China. So. Uh, you're sitting having tea and you look at Mount Rakapashi, which is 25.5. Wow. So, you, you know, these are huge mountains around. And the wall. Excuse me, we have a technical difficulty here. Um, we finally, after about three weeks of negotiating and uh, where are we gonna do? These are hardy people. The year before they had a race at a place that was a lot milder. The 18 started, four drowned that we're talking about these type of guys, you know what yeah. I mean? They're like Afghanis. They're just, whatever it is, they'll go do it. Got it. Um, so I won the race, by the way. Um, what did you get but, as a prize? Uh, a yak burger. <laughs> Was it good? I got to ride a yak up to the village got from it. the river. But the point I'm gonna make is, I had brought a kayak with me. It was a, it, it was like a, um, an Avon, except it, it was that tough. It was really a tough rubber. This was not a hundred dollar adult toy. This was a thousand dollar 40 years ago, yeah. very tough kayak that you used a pump to blow it up. And I had scouted this river and so I put in the river and it was just way over my head. And so uh, I finally flipped. And the guy that I beat in the swimming ran down a mountain and there's a photo of this guy running down this steep mountain to go save me. Um, but in over my head. Yeah. Yeah. In all these travels, you, you, you either have competitors, you have someone who's helping you. Um, I mean, even selecting your crew, those people who support you, they had to be tough characters, right? Yeah, yeah, they, uh, actually, the, uh, the 10 events that I did called Every Man's Olympics and uh -huh. Adventure Decathlon, the guy that shot um, the film, he, he was one of those New York high level speeder type photographers um, cameraman that just liked to be and get in wars. You know, the best place for him was Beirut, you know, where people were shooting each other yeah. so he could, uh, so he could film it. He directed a film with the Hells Angels. Okay. I mean, it was, you don't even want to be near, you don't even want to see the film. It's so scary. Yeah. That's the type of guy. Uh, so you're right. Yeah. They, they had to go along too. And by the way, the uh, the one event that I did was to climb to the top of North Africa, 
uh, the crew got to a certain place and they say, we're not going any further. Okay. So, which made it actually very cool because they got this shot that they, from uh, a thousand feet, feet below that they wouldn't have got if they were next to me. Um, yeah. But you're right. Yeah. I mean, the crew, it's like in, in your swimming, the crew has to, uh, they have to be kind of with you. Yeah. Yeah. What's amazing to me is you did all these events before the internet, before oh, smartphones, yeah. before you could Google something or look at it up through Wikipedia and you're traveling the world. I mean, do you have a hundred dollars in your pocket all the time just to get you out of from one place to the other? How do you, how do you navigate the world? Well, I, I did it as a profession. You know, when I first started out, uh, that's another thing, yeah. uh, rejection, you know, the okay. fear, I'm not going to do that. It's the fear of rejection. Um, I got rejected multiple, multiple times in New York, pitching my, I'm going to swim here and there. And they would say, really, who cares? Yeah. Uh, that's okay. not a sport anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and then finally I was able to break through when life magazine covered my, um, swim from Morocco to Gibraltar that kind of put me on the map Got and it. then it was a lot easier and then when I was on the cover of Sports Illustrated uh, then people were coming to me Got did it. you swim okay. the English Channel with our band-aid on uh, <laughs> you know. so um, so then some... I was funded yeah um, I mean not handsomely right but it got me, it continued to get me around the world. So I, I, I kept on, for example, the, um, the Every Man's Olympics 10 events was a cover story on a signature magazine. And uh, I get a call from the editor saying, uh, I, I, I think you should know this, David, but I just got a letter from someone that read your story and they think it's really good. Uh, that guy happened to be the head of Air France, North America. So what do you know? The next thing I'm going around the world in 80 days on Air France. Got it. Got you it. know, that's part of the stepping stone. Yeah. Now, one event, in fact, I was just writing about this the other day. Um, one, one of the destinations was Bora Bora. And uh, there's Bora Bora is like a six mile long island. There's a fringe reef and a barrier reef. Yeah. And there's a, just a gorgeous turquoise lagoon. And there's sharks there. And there's also those rays that are like 747s. Yeah. So it was the first time I, I, I started at the hotel Bora Bora and swam to the club med. Oh, really? And okay. of course I had a boat with me yeah. and there was a cameraman. So it was the first time I ever used a snorkel and fins because I'm going to swim over something that's gorgeous. Yeah. And so I'm swimming and I'm, uh, I, at first I see one of these rays and they're really huge and I was ready to get in the boat and, um, and then I calmed down, they're docile. So I said, you got to stay pretty near me. Yeah. So I'm swimming and then I just get into this rhythm and, reverie and I'm looking into this gorgeous blue abyss and I'm not you know I'm not I'm breathing side to side I'm breathing through this tube yeah and then all of a sudden something you know I, am I going the right way and I look up and I am going the right way and then I look for the boat and the boat's nowhere near me oh wow and maybe you guys have had this I don't know I must have been so scared, immediately I got cramps in the bottom of both yeah. feet. Got it. Oh, wow. Uh, and one cramp I was able to get out, and the other one, I kind of kept my foot cocked for a while until uh -huh. it finally released. So, so in this um, case, you're, 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 what, at least three miles from shore? Where, where do you? Oh, live? yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm out in the middle of that place. <laughs> where there's sharks. With. There's other <laughs> some big fish out there. Yeah. So how do you, how do you get to shore? How'd you get to shore? Oh, no, I, I just kept on swimming, you know, oh, so you you swim? The, swim. You yeah, no, I kept by on yourself. going and, and, uh, they, the cameraman said, God, we thought you drowned. 
And I said, really? Well, what about you guys? Where were you? Uh, well, the, the guy had motor problems. So, oh, okay. really? Thank you. Uh, but you know, that was kind of in over my head. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't, I wasn't really responsible for that. Yeah. Uh, in over the head at the, the kayak was, I really, um, I, I wasn't up to it. Uh, yeah. I wasn't skilled enough to deal with that river. Got it. I, I want to go back to where you're in New York and you're knocking at doors looking for yeah. sponsors. And, and you're, you're making these pitches just like I, I'm from L.A. So people are making pitches for movies all the time and TV yeah. pilots. And rejection is part of the process. Um, what were some of your most creative um, pitches that you made that may not have been accepted, but you thought, boy, this is it? Well, I never really thought about that. Um, I, I will say that when I started uh, pitching, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I didn't know a pitch from a hitch. To, uh, <laughs> you know, I just said, I, first of all, you got to get past the gatekeeper. Yeah. Okay. You know, and back in those days, there was no assistant. They were called secretaries. God. Well, this, he, you know, Mr. Dan, he doesn't have much time. You know, I, I would say five minutes and you're out of here. Um, so how would you get past these gatekeepers? Step one. I, I'll tell you, just in kind of, this is might be historic here, but, you know, I wasn't the only, we'll call it sales guy in New York. Yeah. Everybody else was. So the first thing was to get enough dimes to put into the pay phones. And the pay phones were in lobbies of those high rises and in some hotels. So, and then everybody's on the phone. So how, how long are you going to be? How, many, how long? How long? And then you're standing and, and they, they were rarely phone booths. Yeah. They were phones next to each other. Right. So, you're talking like this because you don't want to hear the other guy trying to get his appointment while you're trying to get your appointment. Okay. So, um, somehow I was able to talk my way to get a meeting. Um, that's where it ended because I, I, I was never, uh, the first two years, never sponsored. No one ever Took David, David and said, "Oh David, yeah, swimming around the Mediterranean. That sounds great." Oh, and you David, did, did, fight David, did, did, oh, this that's is... really are you crazy? But uh, how do you make a living doing that? Uh, excuse me, that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> David, oh, this Ned, is, Ned, Ned has a question. Ahead, in Ned. those two, in those two years, David, did you try to put a zero on the figure and see if that would work better? Were, were you were you pitching a small budget activity? to people who were only looking at big budgets. You wanna know something? I wasn't pitching a number. That's, I was not pitching a number. I was pitching a concept. And you weren't getting anywhere with a concept. No, I wasn't. And, but the first time I ever got paid for it, I was uh, talking to the, um, the bottler of Coca-Cola in Tangier. And I told him what I was gonna do. He was an old going blind Marine, ex-Marine. And um, I said, uh, I'm gonna attempt this swim and you can have the photos. And, and the guy said, well, what do you want? It, just like what you're saying. How much? How much? And I, and I, I was stopped. I, you didn't have an answer? I know I didn't have an answer. Oh. And so he said, here. Um, and so he gave me like a clipboard and a <laughs> paper. And he said, go out in the lobby and figure it out. And, uh, and you might like this. And so his assistant gave me a beaker full of Coca-Cola syrup. Wow. I took a hit of that and I'm ready to go up the walls. I was never into coffee and I was just, it was, I said, this is fuel. This is, and actually 
I, I, I used it, it was my, on my first feeding and, um, and it was an open beaker and salt water got in there and then I barfed for, I don't know, a couple of hours. But uh, that was the first time I got confronted or had to confront myself with, well, how much do you want? I'm, I'm reminded of the movie where um, Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck go to the asteroid and they're drilling to try to save the world. And the government says to them, well, it's probably a suicide mission. You know, what, what do you and the crew want? And they're going, well, you never want to pay taxes again. I've got 57 outstanding parking <laughs> tickets. <laughs> I broke out of jail. I want all that stuff taken care of. You didn't have like a big bar bill you'd run up and, and a, you know, altercation with the police and say, I want these things sorted out as well? <laughs> no. Remember, I own the bar. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, let me see. I should go back there and figure out. Why. <laughs> that's, maybe that's why I didn't give a figure. I just gave a concept that got rejected all the time. But I'll tell you, I handled the rejection. Uh, I, I just thought I'm meeting someone else that's um, new um, and um, getting to know New York. Yeah. Uh, so it didn't, it didn't stop me. Uh, I, I just kept on getting rejected and getting rejected. And, and then finally, there was the breakthrough when life did the story. Yeah, this, this is great. So I, I see a lot of commonality with our with our modern day adventures, um, Lewis Pugh comes to mind. Lewis Pugh, very much like you, he's he's understood. He faces rejection. He he pitches a concept with a budget. Um, people don't accept it, but he finds somebody over time. And, and Lewis is a he swam in Mount Everest. He swam down in the, uh, Antarctica uh, and uh, the North Pole. My question to you is. You were doing this again in the pre-internet era, but now we have kids who everything is at their fingertips, on their laptop, yeah. on their yeah. mobile phone, uh, you know, at least here in the state of California, you know, physical education classes have been wiped out. Um, for the young kids, the, the teenagers and the young adults who want to live a life of adventure as you have, um, what advice would you give them? How, how would you say, look at, you know, you could travel the world, meet new people, do new things, and, and they're, they're lost because they've had everything at their fingertips. What is that advice yeah. you would give them? I think they've got a tough, um, a tough thing to change their, their mindset. Yeah. Um, I suppose like I did when, when I thought I had it made because I was the biggest uh, drunk and uh, richest drunk in San Francisco. Um, the difference is that there's, um, do you remember when I started out, there were no runners. It's okay. a hard concept to grasp. Got but it. There was no run. There was yeah. no have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it's all out there. Um, the, the physical part is, you know, there, I couldn't find a, a yoga place in New York uh, when I first started out. Uh, when I'm doing the, the high atlas, I, I train my body, but I thought I needed to train my mind to not be such a speeder. And so I, I had heard about yoga and I found some guy that had a little uh, studio in a high rise. That was the only guy around. So there's, there's a yoga studio on every other block in LA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it's all there. You just have to say, this is what I want and, or, or pick. I use National Geographic a lot. Okay. I would comb through National Geographic and um, I, I remember the, um, the, the pre-bungee jump. Yeah, it was the I think the Trogan Islanders would uh, leap off of an 80 foot tower uh, on a rope that might be just short of yeah, breaking the ground. The neck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that was their virility deal. Yeah, uh, and so I and and the guy it was a Dutchman that did it, uh, and uh, actually he had a 16 millimeter camera and it was shot. So uh, I I used 
National Geographic a lot. And then Got people it. would say, have you ever heard about this? Or, you know, why, why don't you do these physical things? Why don't you climb the Matterhorn? Really? I, I never climbed a mountain before. Um, I, that might have been another a little over my head. The Matterhorn. Because uh, I climbed the Matterhorn. Got it. Um, and, and this is how unprepared I was. I, I bought a new pair of hiking boots. Brand so new. the first time I wore them was going up. The okay. And, and, and there's a place where you, uh, you spend the night before you start at 4 o'clock in the morning. And so it's daylight that afternoon that yeah. you're walking up to that place. And there's, there's a lot of people that climb the Matterhorn. Yeah. Um, and these guides would look at my shoes and then look at me like, really? Rookie. <laughs> Why would you have a new pair of shoes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the guy was right. Before I even left that refuge or whatever you call it, I had bleeding blisters. Yeah. You know, my socks were red. Yeah. Um, a little over my head and unprepared. And yeah. of course, one of the things that I say is, how come I've stayed alive? And you asked that, uh, was that I prepared. Uh, you prepare until you get to the over your head. <laughs> and then you got to deal with it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to share uh, the, the, my screen. And it has um, the features your um, website. So, uh, contemporary swimmers, adventurers, and people who are just looking to extend themselves um, physically, yeah, mentally. Yeah, there's one right there. Okay. You know, <laughs> I, I, I fought bulls in Spain. Okay. So, and, but and that, I was a, that was a rhino. A rhino. <laughs> and so, you know, I got with this Back rhino, down. and um, I, I, I didn't know that their eyesight wasn't very good. They're oh. really more <laughs> into smell so this guy could have just turned his head and you'd be talking to somebody else this morning got it got it and where is this where you're you're yelling across the river or yeah I, i'm uh here with uh these are some uh -huh. buru warriors uh-huh uh and i'm about ready to do the the jump dance okay where they jump up and down and come down on the flat part of their foot like when we jump up and down, we come down on the, the, our toes, the ball, and then our, our heel. They Got come it. down on the whole flat part of their foot. Got it. And they jump pretty high. And I do too, because I was a high jumper. And so that causes, when you come on the flat part of your foot, it causes a concussion that starts energy up your legs. So it kind of revs you up. Oh, wow. And at the same okay. time, uh, if they're ready to f hunt a lion, they they chant how many lions they've killed, even though they killed none. Uh, and they don't hunt lions for the meat. They hunt lions if a lion kills one of their gombies, <coughs> one of their steers, then they have to go get that lion because that lion's going to come back and get another one. Yeah. Did you impress any of the maidens when you were jumping up and down? I, I'm sorry. Did you impress any of the maidens when you were jumping up and down? Uh, <laughs> actually, there wasn't any around. It was yeah. just these guys here. Yeah. Well, uh, David, I, I, we're going to cut it short because, I mean, we could be here days and days um, just being enthralled by your adventures. And I wanted to share the website because if people wanted to reach out and, and learn more about your your life, your mindset, your books, your speeches, your projects, um, they could visit uh, adventuresmith.com. Great. Thanks. And, uh, thank you very much for, for everything that you've uh, uh, shared and introduced to the world. Hey, it's always fun to be with Steve and Ned. You know, we, we yes, we could talk for days <laughs> yeah. about your we, stuff. Yes. And, and when we get over to San Francisco, we will. Yes. Thank you very much. Take, Take care, care, David. Bye. Bye-bye.